Our journey begins in China, where the economic landscape seems to be undergoing a significant transformation. The visual cues are everywhere, rows of half-finished apartments standing as silent witnesses to economic uncertainty. The bustling scenes of Chinese tourists exploring various corners of the world have noticeably dwindled. What's happening in the world's second-largest economy, and how did we get here? As we navigate through the complexities, one glaring statistic stands out, the youth unemployment rate. In just a few short years, the number of 16- to 24-year-olds unable to find work has more than doubled, soaring from about 10% in 2019 to a staggering 20% this summer. What does this mean for the younger generation in China, and how does it impact the overall economic fabric? Now, let's talk numbers. The Chinese stock market, once a powerhouse, has seen a significant drop, losing about 40% of its value since 2021. Real estate, a cornerstone of China's economic strategy, hit a historic low in sales last year. These are not mere blips on the economic radar, they are signals of a more profound shift. But what led to this downturn, and can China weather the storm as it has in the past? Let's rewind the clock and revisit the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. China, despite being heavily dependent on the United States as its largest trading partner, managed a remarkable recovery. While the rest of the world contracted, China's economy not only weathered the storm but grew by nearly double digits. Fast forward to the COVID-19 pandemic in 2019-2020, where supply chains were disrupted, factories halted, and service workers had no option to work from home. Yet, China, once again, emerged as the first major country to recover. How did China manage to defy expectations during these global crises, and what's different this time around? Our story brings us to a pivotal moment, the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. At that time, the world was reeling from the impact of a global economic downturn. China, heavily dependent on the United States as its largest trading partner, faced a potential catastrophe. Thousands of Chinese factories and millions of workers relied on American consumers who suddenly found themselves out of work and on the hook for mortgages they couldn't afford. The odds were stacked against China, and yet, it managed a remarkable recovery. By 2009, China not only stabilized its economy but became the first major economy to bounce back, growing by nearly double digits. What was China's secret sauce during this period, and how did it turn the tide in its favor? In the COVID pandemic, supply chains disrupted, factories halted, and service workers had no ability to work from home. The world watched as economies around the globe contracted. However, once again, China defied expectations. It not only weathered the storm but emerged as the very first country to recover. How did China manage to stay resilient during these global crises, and what lessons can we draw from its ability to navigate troubled waters? To answer these questions, we need to unravel the layers of China's economic evolution and understand the dynamics at play. Join me as we dig deeper into the historical context, exploring the threads that weave together China's economic resilience. Don't forget to hit that like button if you're finding this exploration intriguing and share it with fellow enthusiasts. Subscribe to Geopolitics Basics more insightful analyses on global politics and economics. China's rise to economic prominence has been marked by a relentless focus on infrastructure development. The strategy was simple, build roads, bridges, skyscrapers, stadiums, airports, basically, build anything and everything. But how did this strategy come to define China's economic playbook, and has it reached a point of diminishing returns? In the early days, when Deng Xiaoping rose to power in the 1970s, China was a different landscape, poor, underdeveloped, and in desperate need of basic infrastructure. Back then, the simplest two-lane road or a single-story school was a massive improvement from nothing. China needed to build first and think later to catch up with the developed world. Fast forward to today, and China boasts 25,000 miles of high-speed rail and 3 million miles of highways. It's an infrastructure marvel, but has China's rapid construction pace hit a wall? The whirlwind of construction that once made sense is now facing scrutiny. Beijing's approach to making borrowing money easy, lowering interest rates, and drowning state-owned enterprises with subsidies worked wonders in the past. It created jobs and raised the country's GDP. But, with China already a middle-income country boasting rich infrastructure, it's running out of things to build. So, what happens when the returns on construction investments start diminishing? To put it in perspective, let's look at the numbers. Two decades ago, it took $4 worth of construction to generate a $1 return. Fast forward to today, and it takes about $12. China is at a crossroads where the old model, the only one it has known, is no longer working. As opportunities for productive investment diminish, China is resorting to increasingly questionable projects. 
Take, for example, the tallest bridge in the world, standing at 1,800 feet above the ground, located in China's equivalent of rural Mississippi. It's an architectural marvel, but is it economically sound? As we navigate through this economic landscape, it's clear that China's construction frenzy is facing a dilemma. The old model, once effective, no longer provides the same returns. What does this mean for China's economic future, and can it find a new path to sustainable growth? China, known for its robust economic growth fueled by investment and infrastructure development, finds itself at a crucial juncture. The old model that relied heavily on these factors is showing signs of strain. So, what's the way forward? In our last segment, we explored how China's economic growth was built on easy borrowing, lowered interest rates, and generous subsidies. But now, with returns on construction investments diminishing, China needs to pivot. The question is, can it successfully transition to a model driven by increased consumption? The shift towards increasing consumption is easier said than done. China, historically a nation of savers, is facing challenges in convincing its citizens to spend more. Consumer confidence is a critical factor, and in the last four years, Chinese consumers have been stashing money away, cutting back on big-ticket purchases like cars, TVs, and furniture. But why the hesitancy to spend, and how is this affecting China's economic landscape? The primary reason for this cautious approach lies in the long-standing belief that real estate is a secure investment. For two decades, Chinese households were taught that buying property was the tried-and-true strategy. Families would save rigorously, pool together funds, and urban couples could buy multiple apartments, living the Chinese dream. However, this narrative came to an abrupt halt last year when property, once considered a safe haven, stopped being a secure investment. What caused this shift, and how is it impacting consumer confidence? The problem is one of confidence. When Chinese consumers receive their paychecks, the decision to save or spend depends on confidence in a steady income. The uncertainty surrounding China's economic future has led consumers to be cautious, resulting in reduced spending on big-ticket items. As a consequence, companies are lowering prices to incentivize purchases, which, in turn, affects profits. Lower profits lead to layoffs and reduced wages, creating a cycle that further erodes consumer confidence. How can China interrupt this negative feedback loop? To understand the gravity of this situation, let's look at the numbers. Chinese consumers currently spend less than 40% of their GDP, a stark contrast to Americans who spend nearly 70%, and Europeans who spend over 50%. The global average hovers around 55%. How can China bridge this gap, and what strategies can it employ to boost consumer spending? At the very heart of China's economic challenges lies a demographic puzzle. For decades, China's growth was propelled forward by a booming population, providing a steady supply of labor to fill the ever-expanding cities, ghost towns, and highways. However, as of last year, China has actively shifted from a population growth strategy to one where the birth rate is plummeting. The labor force is expected to decrease by about 1% every year by 2030. So, what led to this demographic shift, and how does it impact China's economic landscape? The great mystery behind China's demographic collapse is deeply intertwined with its notorious one-child policy. Implemented in the late 20th century to control population growth, the policy remained in place until 2016. The question arises, why did China persist with a policy that would inevitably lead to a shrinking population? Unraveling this mystery gives us crucial insights into the effectiveness of one of the most significant national policies in history. Exploring this period in Chinese history reveals a unique perspective. The one-child policy, while effective in controlling population growth, has had lasting effects on the demographic structure. As the birth rate drops to the lowest level globally, at just 1.09 children per woman, China is now grappling with a significant demographic challenge. By 2030, the labor force is expected to decrease annually by 1%. How does this demographic transition impact China's economic growth, and what does it mean for the nation's future? To truly grasp the impact of this demographic shift, we need to look beyond the numbers. China, once able to build almost aimlessly, confident in a steady supply of bodies to fill every project, now faces a different reality. The old model, built on the assumption of perpetual population growth, is reaching its limits. China needs to recalibrate its economic strategies to adapt to a shrinking labor force and changing demographic dynamics. As we conclude this segment, the demographic shifts in China present a unique set of challenges that the nation must navigate. Stay tuned for more revelations about the economic intricacies shaping China's future. If you're finding this exploration insightful, hit that like button and share it with fellow enthusiasts. 
Subscribe to Geopolitics Basics for more analyses on global politics and economics. Until next time, stay curious everyone.